Good morning, this is Bill from the Upside of Downsizing. I just wanted to give you a quick update what we've been doing the past couple days on the solar shed. And uh, as you can see, we've done quite a bit of plaster work on the outside. And right over here, you may notice, right there, you may notice that it appears as though it's been bricked in, and it indeed has been bricked in. We're actually going to stucco, or I should say earthen plaster this entire area, but Yvonne's been busy making bricks and we thought using the bricks as fill might allow us to uh, fill up a larger portion uh, more quickly as opposed to doing six or eight inches of cob and then waiting for the cob to set the next day and then building it up and up in that fashion. And we were actually able to go from this point here all the way to the top in about uh, 20 minutes. So it worked out well. And it's going to be covered in earthen plaster. So really those were just uh, filler blocks. So we used the ugly, the ugly bricks from the first couple batches. So what we've also done is trimmed out around the windows and uh, just use two by four wrapped in chicken wire. And what that's gonna do, it's all gonna be plaster, but it's just gonna give some more visual interest to the building. Uh, once it gets plastered, it'll be like little bump outs around the, around the windows. And uh, I also wanna chime in here just briefly because I'm noticing that the wind is picking up a little bit and I've had some comments about the wind noise in my videos. And I'm desperately trying to find a, a microphone, an external microphone that works with an Android phone that uh, would alleviate this problem. I've now tried two different microphones that I've purchased through Amazon, and unfortunately, they I just they're not working. One is one was a complete failure. The one I received yesterday that I had high hopes for, and the one I had before that is one of those lapel mics, which is makes me corded to the phone and it's just it's very cumbersome so if anybody has any suggestions as term in terms of an external microphone that i can use on an android phone please leave them in the comment box below i greatly appreciate any advice or suggestions you guys could give so i'm going to walk around to the front of the building and show you what's going on on the front So you may have seen in a previous video or on Instagram that uh, we installed another window. And what we did was this window was actually from our neighbor across the way who I uh, demoed her uh, carport for a couple weeks ago. And she had that extra window. It's a double pane, uh, low E glass. I, I don't know if it's low E, but it has the uh, ultraviolet uh, tint on it. Kind of like on a car, car windows that has that sort of green tinge to it. So it's three feet by four feet, so I had to do a little reframing and then uh, installed that window. And then what I did was, again, I took a two by eight, went across the bottom, and then framed up around with two by four. And there are still a couple pieces where chicken wire needs to be put around the wood. Without the chicken wire, the earthen plaster just doesn't stick. So wrap it in chicken wire with staple gun, and uh, it's been working out real well. So that now also you can see that we've uh, got some plaster going around the corners here and things are starting, let me get in a little closer. So things are starting to get sealed up. Walk around to the other side. Okay, so on this side you can see that we have the earthen plaster on the entire wall. Now what's sticking out right there, that that white strap, that's part of the webbing that we used to, to compress the top plate and the sill plate together. And it's uh, it's sticking out a little bit from the, uh, from the first coat of plaster, the scratch coat or first coat of plaster. It should get covered by the second. I've been tempted to cut it because thinking the compression is complete, we have plaster now inside and out but um, I'm getting a little resistance from my better half and uh, she usually has a good feel for these things. So you can see up above in these corners here. So we have to fill those in and our intent is on this side, which is the west side of the building, to use bottle brick. And on the other side, uh, we're contemplating using a combination of cob and 
mesquite log. So I would just take uh, different size logs from our mesquite that we've cut down, put it using my uh, chop saw, cutting it out to the cutting pieces to the width of the wall or the thickness of the wall, call it six inches for example, and then using those almost like bottle brick technique, and you'd see then this the uh, mesquite slices from the inside and outside. We've seen examples of that on YouTube. It looks pretty cool, so we're tempted to go with that, and then. Coming around to the back, this is the side that has the least amount done, and it's probably because this side is the southern exposure, and if we don't get jumping on it really early, then it uh, it gets pretty hot working out here, even when it's just about 80 degrees. The problem is not the heat for us, but we don't want the earthen plaster to dry too quickly. So it's probably going to be one of those things where we have to wait for a cloudy day, or we're just going to end up getting up really early, or doing it late at night or in the evening after the sun starts to go down. So the problem is it's the largest exterior wall and it's gonna take a little time. So early morning will probably be the better, the better choice. So, and up here, this is the drip flash, the drip edge from the roof that I installed. And we're gonna be putting in um, gutters here with a rainwater, a couple rain barrels back here to see how much rain we can collect off this roof. We should be able to get about 110 gallons per inch of falling rain, according to the, uh, the calculations and the uh, formulas you see on the net. So let me go around to the front again, take you inside. Okay, so as you can see, the interior walls do all have their first coat on them. Back here, let me turn around here, around the window. Here you can see, let's see if I can get it, get it to expose better. There we go. There you can see the brick, the shadows of the bricks that we used to fill in. And again, that's going to get covered with another coat of earthen plaster, and that's going around the windows, so the window's been plastered in. Sorry about this. And then up high, here you can see it also. Right up there, we used just the uh, the adobe bricks and filled in with some uh, cob, and that's just to fill in the space. Gonna get another coat of earthen plaster around it so the bricks won't be visible. So our goal today is to get all of the brickwork done. So we're gonna use the better we're going to use the better adobe bricks that Yvonne has made, and we're going to be filling in these areas here and around the corner using a brick pattern. We haven't decided what pattern we're going to do, whether it's just going to be a running bond, a standard brick, brick design, or whether we're going to do something a little fancier. But um, we're going to be mixing a new... A new mortar today that's going to have no straw in it. This is purely, this is a, a formula we got from the Canelo project. Uh, and it's going to have clay, our, our soil here, and some water, but no straw in it. And this is going to be mixed a lot thinner and it's going to be resemble more of a traditional mortar doing brickwork. So hopefully we'll get all four of these put in and continue then the outside mortaring. So I'll come back later and show you what it looks like after we get done. Okay, I guess if you want to have a test to see what the uh, quality of the brick is, I just took the uh, angle grinder with a four and a half inch masonry wheel on it and I cut one of the bricks in half. And 
I gotta tell you, it was a lot tougher than I thought it was gonna be. I had to go around all four sides and then break it in the center. And just wanna see if you can see that. It's a, a very dense, uniform mixture, and I think it's gonna be very stable. Okay, so this is gonna be our mortar mix. What I have is one part clay, two parts dirt, and about one half part water. I just decided to mix a small batch by hand, no straw, and it has a really nice consistency to it, and it's very sticky. So I think this is gonna be a really good mix, and I'll let you know if it works or not. Okay, so here's the first batch of mortar and our adobe bricks. And of course, as soon as I turn on the camera, the wind picks up. Again, if you have any suggestions as far as microphones are concerned, please leave them in the comment box below. I really need some advice on this one. But it's going well. I made a second batch of mortar and we're gonna continue. Okay, so we continued with the next set of bricks. Yvonne's now going back and cleaning it up and making it look a little nicer. And again, this is this area here on the wood is going to be all covered with mortar. After we do the second bay of bricks, we're going to fill in the two rows with a mortar or a cob mix. So here's what it looks like from the inside. Once it dries, once it dries, you uh, start to see the bricks themselves a little more clearly. Actually, you, you can see that on the outside. Let me go around to this angle here. So the bricks will start materializing, and the mortar will dry down to the right color as well. Okay, it's the end of the day and I just want to do a quick little recap. You can see behind me that we got two of the bays bricked in using the adobe bricks that Yvonne had made and an earthen mortar. The one thing that we, we realized is we needed more bricks. So before we can complete bricking in the open bays on the solar shed, we needed to make more bricks. 
So we made another 50 bricks this afternoon. Took about an hour and a half, three batches of uh, mix in the cement mixer, and it goes a lot faster using that machine. So really is a lifesaver. The other thing I've managed to get done today, and I, around the perimeter of the door, I threw in some great stuff to seal that gap, and it'll get covered with mortar anyway. And yes, this morning when I came out, I had a nice, a real pleasant surprise. This corner right here I did yesterday uh, with, at the end of the day, and I used a very, very loose cob earthen plaster mix, and it was very easy to mold, and I was just concerned it might not hold. Well, it held beautifully and really allowed me to create a nice radius here. Now, this is just the first scratch coat, but the scratch coat is really important because it's the, it's the adhesion between the substrate and the cob, and the su subsequent uh, layers bond much better to its own material. So uh, being able to get a nice radius on this uh, portion of the building here uh, made me very happy. So the other thing that we did was we, as you can see, we uh, had wrapped the windows. We had wrapped these windows here with some wood to give it a little bit more dimensionality, if that's a word even. And uh, that was about it for the day. So we are going to probably, we'll figure out something to do tomorrow. I guarantee it. There's always something to do. But the one thing we'll probably have to do is give these bricks at least another 24 to 48 hours to dry out before we can uh, use them in the building. But again, I'm having a real problem with the wind noise on my videos. And, you know, I'm just a guy who uses his Android phone to create videos. Um, I don't have a lot of fancy uh, video equipment. But if anybody knows of a... Of a third-party mic or an external microphone that I can use on an Android phone that might help solve this problem, uh, please leave, leave it in the comments below. Any help or suggestions would be greatly appreciated. Right now what I've done is I've taken two little pieces of sponge foam uh, material that's supposed to, to block wind noise from microphones from a little lapel microphone. I've cut them and I've actually taped them over the internal microphones on the phone. So hopefully that's helping out a little bit anyways uh, again any help that you guys could provide would be a a real a real um lifesaver because i i don't want to create videos that are impossible to hear thank you for watching thank you for subscribing and sharing and if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the box below and we'll catch you in the next video this is bill from the upside of downsizing Just a quick update on my uh, battery bench. As you can see, the Chevy Volt batteries fit perfectly on the lower shelf, sitting stable and secure with plenty of room on top for other items. Hopefully within the next two weeks or so, these will be fully installed in the solar shed. But until then, they're safe off the ground and on a stable, in a stable situation.